Hey, it's Kim McKay, and now episode 6 has been finally released to the public, and we can all feel the end game of Game of Thrones this season is right there. The characters have connected in many different ways we never saw before. They've fought, they've died, they've suffered, and now they're coming back together and focusing on that threat north. And this preview really goes in to show how immensely difficult the logistics of this will be, not just for the people, but the characters as well. Let's get into it. So it's been a while, we may have forgot about the Grey Worm and all the Unsullied by now, but they're still out there, they've been marching their way back from Castle Rock, because they couldn't stay there, because they didn't have any supplies, and they're probably just finally starting to reach King's Landing now, so clearly they were just allowed to walk through the entire Westlands, King's Landing, no trouble, nothing, so that's kind of interesting. I guess Cersei's plan, like all her plans, is just to stall as long as possible, even though she has no idea what's happening up north, to make stalling really matter to her immensely, but hey, all the Masandi Grey Worm fans can probably have another sex scene now. Now, if we thought the tension between Gendry and Thoros and Dordarian, the Hound and Jon and Tormund and Jorah was hard when they were going up north, wow, this is going to be tense. You've got Euron Greyjoy, this exclusively madman, abuser, slaughterer, everything on one side with the entire fleet just there, facing against all the ships it has Theon, who knows his sister is still a captive on one of those ships just across there, probably getting tortured. That will really make you sleep well at night. And then we have Jamie and Bronn sitting on the parapets of King's Landing, watching huge ranks upon ranks of thousands of Unsullied just there, with hordes of Dothraki who they just fought in this terrifying battle, streaming in behind the Unsullied. This situation is going to be so unbelievably tense that a single hair trigger or one madman pirate could blow it all to pieces and make mayhem release. So episode 7 is definitely going for that same thing we got in the previous episode, where everything is just so tight and people have to work together in the most tense of scenarios with the highest breath there to overcome the bigger problem. Very reminiscent of the Cold War and how they had two extremely terrified sides with hugely powerful weapons ready just to go at each other at the single excuse to do so. But they knew they had to overcome this impulse to save humanity from an Armageddon. If you want to talk about Darth Sansa, let's talk about Sidious Sansa now. With what we saw last episode with the tension between Arya and Sansa just building and building, with no trust, with genuine fear, things are about to go really, really bad for the relationship, or they're going to have to pull together, just like every other storyline we've seen over the last two episodes. We may have to see someone fail at pulling together at this critical point to be able to prove the point they need to do it somewhere else. And I would rather it fail in the context of the scenario between Ari and Sansa than everyone else in humanity, including the two sides with Cersei and Danny failing their relationships and the White Walkers winning. So I fear these two different scenarios could be used as parallels where one does work together and one doesn't work together and how that turns out terribly for the people who don't pull together. Now we've also got this shot here of Theon on the beach, he seems defeated, he just seems washed up. So it's possible he's acted on his plan he talked about when he first arrived with Jon Snow on the beach of rescuing a sister and failed. Though I have been saying that Euron probably won't survive till season 8 and probably will die in this episode, so it'd be really nice to see if he actually managed to kill Euron even though he didn't save his sister and both of them died. That would be really cool to see. Still don't know if that person there is anyone important or not. Probably just probably not. There is only one war that matters, and it is here. Okay, so what we see here is the dragon pit. This was a housing pen almost for the Targaryens where they kept their dragons King's Landing a long time ago. But I believe in the Dance of Dragons during a riot, there was this huge uprising between peasants because dragons were killing tons of people and they were very anti-dragon. So they went into the, to the dragon pit and they just started killing dragons. Flocks and flocks of peasants. Most of them were burnt alive because dragons versus peasants, peasants die. But just a sheer numbers swarmed through and they brought down the entire dragon dome area with the dragon pit was and it killed all the dragons that were there so it's quite a historically significant place 
Now, something that interested me was that all the scenes we got here from the Dragon Pit, we don't see Daenerys. Like, I thought we didn't see Daenerys. I looked for ages and ages and ages, and I finally think I found her. Just in this small split second over Jon's shoulder. So I thought for a second there, I'm like, whoa, 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 is Danny not going to be there? We're not going to get that awesome pissing contest between her and Cersei? But yes, we probably will. Cersei would have thought that she was free of this disgusting prophecy that has held down her life for so long, where she was prophesied that a younger and more beautiful queen would come in and take all she hold dear and destroy it. This is the main reason she has hated Marjorie Tyrell from the start, because she always emphasized that prophecy onto her, and she finally thought she killed her, she's moved on, she's won, the prophecy was fake. Then Danny rocks up on the scene, she's like, seven hells, I thought I was done with this book. Oh shit, so she's gonna really, really, really hate her. Cause she's probably thinking, damn, this is the one now. But this entire dragon pit scene is gonna be super interesting. Just the looks all the characters are gonna give each other is gonna be immense. We've got the Darth Raki, Tyrion, Podrick Prane, Davos, Varys, Jorah, Theon, John, Danny, Sande, everyone is there. Then you've got Cersei, Jaime, Bronn, and probably the mountain protecting Cersei. But the one thing is, where's the hound? Now we've seen from the trailer shot this. Now this here was a very controversial and interesting shot and we haven't got it yet so there has to be in this episode or it's cut. Now comparing the background to what we have in the dragon pit, it's definitely in the same place as the dragon pit. And it looks like the hound to us. So it seems like the hound is either coming outside of a box, protecting a box, or is rocked up and he's ready to fight. Now this has had many people really ready for a claim bowl. How do we go from a peaceful talk supposedly making your forces focus on what's happening up north to a trial by combat that's not really existing anymore? So there has to be some kind of spark or conflict. Why is the hound pulling out a sword? Something big's happening. And why does it look like he's coming out of this box? The box you presume would be for the white. Maybe they've stunned a switcheroo and the hound comes out of the box instead of a white. Or someone who doesn't want this alliance to pull through has tried to destroy the white or the box or something like that and he's there protecting it. Or it's gone missing or something, he's drawn the sword because everyone thinks it's a hoax and a failure and everyone's like, what the hell's happening? I'm not entirely sure, but it's definitely going to be some really awesome tense stuff happening. So tell me your thoughts about everything in the comment section below. And I cannot wait for episode 7 because it's going to be amazing. I want to thank this episode's sponsor, Geek Fuel. If you want to get a monthly mystery box full of awesome geek apparel and gear and stuff like I do, then you should definitely head over to Geek Fuel and check it out. It really supports my channel and makes me have to put more of these previews out and reviews and so much more because this season is not done for me yet. I've got reviews and theories and so much more to come, so your guys' support would mean everything. Thank you so much and make sure you subscribe. That's geekfuel.com slash kingofk. Hey, it's King McKay.